So we're going to talk about the military history of Private First Class Thomas DeLucia from the 903 Company, 2nd Army, the 1st Army, and the 9th Army. The basic training was conducted at Fort Lee, Virginia in July, August, and September of 1942. The training was led by the 7th Cavalry West Point officers, Captain King and 1st Lieutenant Mama. July 29, 42, in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania, Tommy received all his needles and examinations and left on August 4th of 42. They were given very rigid rifle training on the firing range. The company's shooting was good and it kept the ratings of the 7th Regiment on top. Of the boys in the company that shot the best, most were from South Philly. Yeah. <laughs> Not even the Marines or the Navy came close to their marksmanship. The 7th Regiment had this shooting record since it had been formed. The West Point officers said they had never seen such courage and determination not giving up as they had seen with your group. They thanked you officially at the regimental ceremony. Private Quartio from 13th and Morris Street was given a medical discharge honorably for refusing to fall out during a rigid 25-mile hike with full field pack. He was further hindered by fallen arches, and he was 40 years old. I'll interject that that uh, intersection, 13th and Morris, is in South Philly. My uncle was born and raised in South Philly. He's a local hometown boy. The advanced training was October, November, and December of 42. The outfit was trained in infantry, engineer, tanks, bazookas, chemical warfare, signal corps, medical corps, machine gun, rifle, judo, and mines. Special training was re received in Atlanta, Georgia, early February 43. Afterward, maneuvers were conducted in the winter in Kentucky and Tennessee. Those maneuvers, they had to wear summer clothes. Your company, the 903rd, was formed at that time. It consisted of 199 men, the 2nd Army Replacement 80th Division. Camp Forest, Tennessee, October 4th, 1943, at Station Hospital. Tommy had a problem with his left foot. The report of the Army doctor stated that the cause of the problem wasn't determined, but you thought that it was from three injections you got in your foot. The total cost in almost two years of training was $2 million. You left Camp Forest in February 3rd of 1944, and you weren't sure where you were going, you just knew that you were done training. The company commander and the officers called for formation. The formation captain asked if any of you wished to be considered for continental service and were to step out of formation. Most of them, including you, Tom, uh, did not know what continental service was. Two men stepped out to remain in North America and the rest, including you, were marched off. Embarkation was New York, New York, Camp Kilmer. A mass meeting was held prior to the embarkation and you were told you were going to England to fight the UK, which was Great Britain. Your company of 200 men was under the command of Captain W.T. Quarles. The officers under him were 1st Lieutenant R.C. Moore, W.M. Whitesides, 2 Lieutenants B.F. Buthards, Paul Muller, J. Mullins, Warrant Officer E. McKeegan. Thousands of GIs were waiting for overseas duty. Tony Campanigro and you were lucky. You got a four-day pass to go home. Four hours. Four hours. Four-hour pass. When you got home, you called Esther at her house, and that was your girlfriend. The time was running out. You had to say goodbye to her family. Your father was in bed sick with cancer. He, had, he was in the military once and he told you, don't worry about him. You're a soldier, duty to your country comes first. And then you set sail for England and the Queen Mary, February 12, 1944. It took five days to make the crossing. During the day, you stayed on deck the British cooks prepared the food and it was very bland and you didn't like it too much. You took salt water showers using special soap and at night the bulkhead doors to your quarters were locked so if you were torpedoed the entire ship wouldn't be down. Unfortunately your bunk was in the quarters near the very bottom so you prayed that the ship would not get hit. 
You arrived, arrived fifth of Clyde in Grenock, Grenlock, Scotland, and encamped in Grenlock overnight, and then arrived in Friedlands, England, the vicinity of Oxford, camped in Sherwood Forest from the end of February to June 1944, the company was assigned to 1st Army from 2nd Army, 80th Division, and you left Freeland by an automotive convoy. And you arrived at Marshalling Area, Winchester, England, then embarked on the U.S. Navy LST, the USS Southampton. June 7th of 44, that was D-Day plus one, your outfit was sent in to Utah Beach in the Normandy Battle Area in two groups of landing craft. This was to spread your troops out and thus enhance the chances of at least some of you making the landing no matter what was encountered during the crossing. However, during the crossing of the English Channel, due to fear and confusion that boats carrying the two halves of your outfit were separated, causing half to land on Omaha Beach. Your group landed on Utah Beach as planned, but you lost seven men. Far worse, the 1st Division, 101st Airborne, 60th Signal Corps was wiped out during that crossing. Shortly after the landing, your warrant officer, E.M. Keegan, an explosives expert, went berserk due to the extreme stress. He dug a hole and wouldn't come out. That night, you and two other had guard duty. Close to us were the bodies of 12 German troops whose throats had been cut by the Free French. Arrived Chef Dupont, St. Mir Iglesias. The outfit was broken up into squads, nine to a squad, and spread out over a very wide area. Your squad eventually drifted so far away from the others that you couldn't be located at all, and this caused you to be declared MIA, missing in action. Two others and two others and yourself stood guard at the field location so as to allow the rest of the squad to regroup with the main outfit. You eventually did regroup at your outfit in Insigne. June 10, 1944, in France, Tony Campanegro was sharing a foxhole with you. You grabbed Tony and pulled him down just in time. A German 88 shell came right by his head. Sure. You were always harassed at night by the German Air Force to prevent you from sleeping. You called on the bad check Charlie. <laughs> After the war, you met up with the German Air Force commander and you have some pictures of him. Before arriving at Insigne, one of the men was riding on top of a tank when it ran, ran over a landmine. Although the tank was not damaged and those in it were not, the rider outside the tank was thrown off and killed when the tank ran over him. Encamped at Insigne with the mud and the rain, and then encamped at Mortain, St. Lo. The enemy stalled the Allied front here in heavy fighting due to hedgerow defenses set up. You were in Patton's army for one month there. Five of you went on a two-week-long secret mission where you spied on German troop movements. Towards the end of the mission, German aircraft attacked. All hell broke loose, but luckily you were able to escape. On the same mission, you also inspected weapons for an infantry company. Encamped at La Loupe Chartre, there were bugs and lice all over. You were stalled there, so the captain told another soldier and yourself to get fresh food like to potatoes. You got through the lines and the MPs and eventually found an old farmhouse. Family there sold you some potatoes in exchange for chocolate and cigarettes. You had some soup with the family and noticed they were hiding a German soldier who had deserted. You made nothing of it. You were just glad to leave with fresh food. There was a stench there that you couldn't identify. In Germany, much later, you realized it was the Nazi death camp. Paris was liberated, the French underground, August 25th of 44. Encamped at Compagnie Forest, Crepe en Valois, France, with the 12th Army Group. It was there you got your first shower in two months. <laughs> and then you were encamped at Quai Charleroi, Belgium. Encamped at uh, Lute Fontaine, Poi Namur, Malmati, the castle of Montmodave. A medical outfit was wiped out and the 7th Armored Artillery was massacred at Malmedy. 7th Armored Artillery uh, Med. Another 86 Amer Americans were massacred at Malmedy, Belgium, December of 43, but four men escaped. 
28th, 75th, and 106th American Infantry Divisions were involved. General Eisenhower had no choice but to put Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery in charge of First Army. In Kant Heights, Verviers, Belgium, Captain W.T. Quarles was relieved of command by the 903rd by Captain Jerome Stevenson. You had pre been preserving with extreme condition, condition for so long that the morale was low. It was there that you buried your mascot, the dog. He froze to death. He was buried with full military honors, the dog. You stopped and questioned two men in a jeep wearing American soldier uniforms. Although they spoke perfect English, you suspected that they were unfamiliar with the baseball teams and turned out to be German spies infiltrating the lines. Anthony Campanigro and you were on guard duty to watch for the German paratroopers. You were extremely tired and very cold and it was snowing. Tony fell asleep. One of the officers crawled over to check on you. He thought you were both sleeping on duty, so he brought you up to the captain, but the captain didn't believe him and dropped the charges. The leaded in factory in Verviers, Belgium, this town was right at the German border. Due to your close proximity to the German troops and all the fighting, your Air Force bombed your troop by mistake, killing 30. A day later, you moved up a mountain. The captain there went on a mission, leaving another officer in charge. The officer had you remove multiple machine gun mount from a half track and set it up on a hilltop without camouflage. He then assigned a sergeant, Tony Caponegro, and you to man it with the intention of shooting down any German aircraft that appeared. Fortunately for you, it rained for three straight days and no aircraft showed up. Later, Captain Stevenson came back, seeing where you were at the gun mount, and was furious that what the officer had done. Since the uncamouflaged mount stuck out so obviously on the hill, and the rest of the outfit would have been quickly eradicated in any confrontation with enemy aircraft, the captain had you go quickly remove the mount and broke the officer down to NCO. You had bitterly been through the cold and rain. The Germans put the Allies in a bad position, forcing you to make a strategic withdrawal from Verviers, Belgium. You were involved in the Battle of Bulge in December 16th of 44 to January 28th of 45. Your outfit was declared MIA, missing in action December of 44. The Red Cross representatives who were trying to deliver you the bad news from home that your father had passed away on November 21st. Consequently, they couldn't find you. It wasn't until your outfit regrouped in January of 45 that you found out. Charles Trost's German plan under the command of Field Marshal von Rundstedt included SS General F. Piper with the 7th Army 6th Panzer SS and the 5th Panzer Division. The German plan included no prisoners to be taken alive. You were briefly in Bastogne, Belgium and St. Vith, Belgium. You were billeted as a former German concentration camp across the river from Liege, Belgium when on Christmas Day of 44, the enemy sent 500 of their V-1 buzz bomb missiles and almost wiped out the city. The area was called Buzz Bomb Alley. During this attack, your own medical outfit, about 100 yards away, received a direct hit from the V-1 and completely wiped out. One soldier came staggering out at you with the top of his head blown away and fell at your feet. There were dead GIs all over. Quartered and bombed out factory in Seals and De Denis for a few days, and then quartered for a few days in normal school. Jodo Ing, a British Army unit, was there too. He returned to Celis and Denay, and then officially billeted in civilian homes in Ampain. You were quartered in a coal mine near Bowensbroke, Holland, and you went to a rest camp for five days. There was five of you. You were relieved of assignment to 1st Army and reassigned to the 9th Army. Your first entry into enemy territory was Brielle, Germany. You were involved in a heated fight there. You held ground in Brielle until the 82nd Airborne came to relieve you. It was very dangerous with many snipers. You were then ordered to cross a German minefield with Germans on both sides. You got through okay thanks to the mine searching techniques. 
The Germans came after you and in the process went across and they didn't make it across casualties from those mines. A German woman had been raped and the army was looking for the rapist. Your outfit was lined up and carefully checked out by the Red Cross and some officers was involved. Billeted in German homes, Grafath, and then crossed the Rhine. Billeted in synthetic oil plant, Holton, Germany, Duisburg, Ruhr Valley. You found a large cache of loot taken by the Germans. You removed gems, gold, and money. This was done under watchful eyes of your officers. Immediately afterwards, you had to disarm and move, remove all your clothes and submit to a complete physical to see if you had hidden any gems in your bodies. You were given a new set of clothes, complete with new weapons and gas masks. Later that week, one of your men came across a bombed out church. When he went in to say a prayer, he fell into a shallow hole. From within the hole, he was surprised to find an underground hiding area of about a block long where the Germans had stashed a large assortment of looted liquor, and it was the best ever. He got very drunk. He came across the captain walking in the area and informed him of the find. The captain gathered all the men and loaded the liquor onto everything we could find with wheels on it. He still had to leave quite a bit behind. And then when you got out of there before the 75th Division and the MPs moved in, also located in the area were displaced persons camp, which held Russians, Poles, and Italian officers. The Russians and the Poles did not get along at all. They were always fighting. Billeted in civilian homes in Hamlin, Germany. Just before the previous jump, the 82nd, the 82nd Airborne Division had been told that it would be their last of the war. Now they were again being told they would be making their last jump, this time at the Elbe River. The jump was needed to get you out of a dangerous location. If this operation did not succeed, you were let it, ready to make a last ditch run for it, and you were lucky it worked. The war in Europe ended VE Day, May 8, 1945. Still in Hamlin, you celebrated VE Day. The city was made famous by the Pied Piper in the 17th century, and since then by the 903rd Ordinance Ham Co. And the British Army took over the area after VE Day. You arrived in Flies, France, June 5th of 45. Located here was a prisoner of war camp held by the Polish Army. Here you met Eric Monberg, who was a German Air Force commander known to the Allies as Bad Check Charlie. Also here was NCO Schmidt, another member of the German Air Force. In August, you were still waiting and had nothing to do, so you volunteered to drive some six by six trucks. While driving one of these alone along a French road, you swerved to miss some stray cattle on the road. The truck went off the road, hit a tree, and rolled several times. You weren't injured, but remained in the truck and were shaken up. Later, some of the boys came by and helped you out and got the truck righted. It was a long drive home. You were told that you would be going home for a 30-day leave and then would be going to California to get ready for the big push on Japan. President Truman ordered the bomb dropped on Japan. You left Flees and war in Japan ended, and that was VJ Day. Little did you know it would be five more months of waiting before you'd be leaving to come home. You arrived in Dijon, France. The outfit was re reassigned to the 903rd Company, 75th Inf Infantry Division for military reasons. The 903rd Company operated under two names. And there was where you were able to briefly meet with Mike Rossi. You arrived Camp Pittsburgh, France. Mike Rossi was my uncle on the other side of the family. Yeah. Mike Rossi, you remember Mike? Yeah. You arrived in Camp Pittsburgh, France. You were supposed to be there for a day, but ended up not leaving for two weeks. Then you went to Calais, France, and all units of the 75th Infantry Division, including 2,006 officers and men, arrived in Marcel, France, November 3rd of 45. Here you boarded a victory ship, the USS Tusculum. During the crossing of the North Sea, a crack developed in the bottom of the ship, and you were worried if you were going to make it back. Then you arrived in Newport News, Virginia, November 19th of 1945, home billeted in Camp Patrick Henry in Hampton Roads. Tom DeLucia was awarded five battle stars, one citation, ribbons from the French, Belgian underground, Normandy, Northern France, 
ardennes, rhineland, and central europe,